So, some more benefits of dashboards. Um, well, it forces and improves interdepartmental communications by creating essentially a meta-language that allows people to talk across the organization, again, vertically and horizontally in the org chart, in a shorthand. It allows them to focus and prioritize and to make trade-offs between different departmental needs or individual needs. It essentially makes the merit of what's being done more important by prioritizing it instead of worrying about the politics or one person's agenda versus another person's agenda. It becomes a number, and so it's harder to debate, and it actually smooths communications. Um, secondly, accountability is raised. Now, a lot of people are afraid of accountability, but accountability comes with it, comes with it a, a big benefit, and that is the manager has more freedom. Uh, a, a supervisor of a manager will give them more rope and let them do more stuff if they're managing up. And dashboards allow you to manage up as a department manager as well as frame and manage down better. So there's a big trade-off in that accountability. Um, thirdly, there's a disciplined process to set aside time to work on the business instead of just in the business. And that's critical. It makes a huge difference in backing off, in systematizing, and it sets up the business to scale and get more revenue and more market share quickly. It also gives your people more fulfillment because they're getting additional responsibilities put on them as these processes and people become more mature. Again, they're moving from micromanagement to management by objective to management by exception, which is the dashboard tool to enable it that allows the senior people to back off more and give managers more leeway. Um, so good dashboards connect the strategy level with the execution level and create a feedback so that you're checking that monthly and quarterly that you're on strategy. Uh, fourthly, uh, it, it focuses the objectives of people. If you've ever tried to have people do three things at once, they'll generally fail at all of them. And so in any given month, you wouldn't want to say improve sales, improve quality, improve costs because none of them will probably get improved in that given month. However, if you have people focus on one KPI, one number in the dashboard for a month or a quarter and say the goal is to get a 10% improvement in that, you will see results. You'll see mental and intellectual focus. You'll see teams pull together with a common goal, which is a very important management principle we talk about in the performance accountability and merit system. Uh, we actually get 10 times as much productivity as the market average when we use all these skunk work techniques and team and leadership techniques uh, that were developed at Lockheed Martin back in the 60s. Um, that really congeal teams to, uh, to work very efficiently. Um, so some more benefits. Number six, it requires managers to know what's happening below them. Dashboards are not just a tool for managing up for your superiors. They're a tool for you managing down. Your department dashboard might have 30 numbers, but you might be only feeding 15 or, or 20 of them up to your superiors. So it gives you better communications and control of what's happening in your department. It can actually make a good manager a better manager and a, and a very good manager a great manager because the clarity and the accountability and the focus and the communications all improve enormously when you have a good dashboard. Now, I gotta underline and bold that word good because a bad dashboard can have the opposite effect. It's the art and the magic is in what are the numbers we're watching. Um, number seven, it creates greater continuity with turnover. If you're speaking this language and you've institutionalized what's happening in the business, when you have turnover and growth, there's less stress on the system. There's less stress on your employees. Guess what? That makes your business a better place to work and your tenure will go up, your, your turnover will go down because people really love to know what's expected of them and they love to have fulfillment. Um, contrary to popular belief, money isn't the number one reason that, uh, that people stay at a business and, and what makes them feel appreciated. It's literally being challenged and being felt appreciated that will make people feel more fulfilled and stay longer in a, in a given business. Um, number seven, uh, it enables management by exception. Again, we're moving from, for both people and processes, we're moving through the spectrum of micromanagement 
to management by objective, to management by exception. And all the people and all the processes should be moving up that spectrum and that curve to reach maturity and refinement until all of these things are at the science of numbers as they get bigger. Um, so uh, MBE allows you, again, it's a tool of can I, it allows you to adjust. Uh, and number nine, it sets benchmarks to maintain and improve the business. Remember the axiom, you can't improve what you don't measure. As soon as you have a benchmark for it, you can, as a manager, hold individuals accountable for their deviation from the average, and, and that's a tool for management and to know who your, your top performers are, et cetera. Um, and dashboards should essentially be business and strategy driven. Um, I'll talk more about this later, but never let the IT people and never let the accounting people, I can't say this enough times, design a dashboard. It's got to be someone that has broad business experience and understands the strategy because the point of a dashboard is to measure the strategically important metrics. And of course revenue and profit are those, but revenue and profit are an effect. They are not a cause. And if you just look at the effect and not the root cause and don't get to the root cause, there's an old saying that looking at only at your financial statement is like driving a car by looking in the rearview mirror. It's history. It's not the cause of what happened. It's the effect of what you did. And what you really need to be looking at is the root causes and playing with and changing those. And they have to be tied into your strategy. Um, dashboards should be more about convention than about software. Remember, you're tracking uh, trends over time, always. It's always a time series. Your only um, uh, need, a, da a dashboard can be put in a spreadsheet. As a matter of fact, I recommend people implement it as a spreadsheet first because they're going to get the first 80 or 90 percent right in the first or, or second iteration but then the remaining 10 or 20 percent might take several months to flush out as you go through the dashboard review process. So you don't want to spend a lot of time and money and you don't want to enable people to have the excuse that it's not automated to participate or you never get there. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the implementation process, which is as much a selling process as a technical design and mechanical process. You've got to get people on board mentally to want to use and understand the benefits of dashboards for them. Um, and, and of course it enables can I. Yeah, dashboard will frame what's important to so steer the organization. It will create focused uh, in, in improvement culture, creates leverage for management's time and moving things again from MBO to MBE. Uh, and uh, it will also produce uh, uh, predict the future because of the extrapolation. Small changes in ratios may be a leading indicator of something that's happening that's outside of your control in the marketplace. It may be something internally, but you're going to notice it right away and you never would have noticed it if you were just looking at raw numbers instead of ratios. So again, very important to have some ratios that would be consistent benchmarks over time as fundamentals uh, of the four types of uh, dashboard numbers that we'll talk about later.